to another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff from MrGoff.com. Today's video will focus on price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of supply, or PES for short, is the responsiveness of quantity supplied to a change in price. That is, if the price changes of a good, how much more or less will be supplied? PES is calculated as the percentage change in quantity supplied over the percentage change in price. Goods with elastic supply have a PES greater than one. This means any change in price will result in a greater change in quantity. Goods with inelastic supply have a PES between zero and one. This means any change in price will result in a smaller change in quantity supplied. As we have just seen, elastic supply is when the percentage change in quantity supplied is greater than the percentage change in price. Products need to have certain characteristics in order to be able to have elastic supply. This might include the fact that more raw inputs for your production process can be easily obtained if needed. If we think about a pizza firm, if they know that there's going to be a busy weekend, perhaps a festival in town, then they can easily acquire more ingredients to be able to make more pizzas over the weekend. Another consideration might be how easily products can be stored and how long they will last for when they are stored. Products that can be stored can be warehoused so that if the price increases, we have a ready supply to wheel out. Perfectly elastic supply would be where any number of a product may be supplied, but only at one specific price. There are no real world examples of perfectly elastic supply. Price in elastic supply is when the percentage change in quantity supplied is smaller than the percentage change in price. Products with inelastic supply are likely to have certain characteristics. If products don't store well, then it is much harder to increase supply when the price increases. Similarly, if the price goes down for these goods, you can't just take them out of the market and wait to sell them later. Products that take a long time to produce will also likely have inelastic supply. If we think about gold, it has to be discovered, extracted and refined before it can be sold. Another reason for inelastic supply would be if component materials are not readily available if we want to increase our production due to an increase in price. Perfectly inelastic supply is where the same amount of a product will be supplied regardless of price. In the short term, seasonal foods have perfectly inelastic supply. That is because the supply is limited to the amount of them that has been prepared and stored when they were available. Unitary elastic supply is where the percentage change in quantity supplied is exactly the same as the percentage change in price. In practice, this is very unlikely to occur. If you are asked to draw a supply curve that is either elastic or inelastic, make sure it is very clear by making sure if it's elastic, it is very flat, and if it's inelastic, it is very steep. The last thing you want is to be near 45 degrees, where the examiner is not sure whether to award you the mark. Finally, don't forget to add labels to the axes and to the supply curve itself. An unlabeled diagram scores no marks. That brings us to the end of our look at the different types of elasticity of supply. I've been Mr. Goff for MrGoff.com. I hope you'll join me again for another GCSE economics video quite soon. The next video will be looking at the importance of price elasticity of supply to consumers and producers. Bye for now.